they assume that the radiation that lands on a field will be plowed under. There's no attempt by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to clean the fields after a nuclear accident. They hose down the houses and let that water run into the rivers. And interestingly, if it lands on a forest, they don't plan to touch the forest. The contamination will stay there until it decays in 300 years. This MAX program takes into account no storage of radioactive material. There's no attempt to put radioactive material into drums and store it until it decays away. Basically, the NRC is assuming that it stays on the ground and in the ground until 300 years are up and the cesium has disappeared. The program assumes that all the radiation, once it comes out of the reactor, stays on the ground and doesn't get resuspended. So a car on a dusty road throwing up dust is not included in the calculation. Probably the, the um, most illogical uh, assumption in the computer program is that they assume the accident lasts for two and a half hours. Yes, two and a half hours. Now, Fukushima has been releasing radiation for seven months, but the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, in their severe accident code, assumes the releases occur for two and a half hours. They also assume that not much fuel is damaged so that the releases are nowhere near as, as severe as Fukushima. They assume that the wind blows in a straight line. And as you look at the, the maps of contamination that came out of Fukushima, that's clearly not true either. And last but not least, they give the owner, the plant owner, the option of paying compensation or cleaning up. Compensation is always cheaper than cleanup. And so when the Nuclear Regulatory Commission runs this program, compensating somebody for their loss, on average, is, is always much cheaper than cleaning up. And that always turns out to be the direction the decisions are made. So this MAX-2 program is designed to, to talk about costs and benefits to society. Now, even with all of these um, assumptions, which minimize the benefits to society, the MAX code has actually predicted some changes should be made. At Indian Point, it was discovered by the state of New York that 14 times the MAX code said these changes are cost beneficial. The state wrote to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission about this, and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission responded saying they are required by law to evaluate, to consider the changes, but they, even if they're cost beneficial, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission isn't required to implement the changes. I teach math at the local college here in Burlington. And one of the things I teach is GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. What that means is that the output of a computer program is only as good as the information that goes into it. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission puts the lowest value on a human life of any agency in, in Washington. It assumes that human life is worth $3 million. Other agencies are 5 to $9 million. So with all the assumptions I just talked about, plus a low value of a human life, it's very unlikely that the NRC will force a utility to make modifications, and it's very unlikely that you'd really want them to be the agency in charge in the event of a nuclear accident. The person who wrote the MAX code is a guy named David Shannon. And he has renounced it. I wanted to share with you his own words about the code and how it's being improperly used. Quote, even in 1975, the cost numbers were underestimated to a significant degree. The underestimation is much more significant today. Unquote. Quote, there are quite a few things that never made sense to me, but Sandia National Labs was directed by the NRC to continue using the prior approach." Unquote. And the final quote is, it seems to me that the code's quality assurance shortcomings and the lack of input justifications are again being ignored. 
unquote. This Max 2 computer program is the key decision-making tool that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission uses when they make decisions about whether a plant should be licensed for an extra 20 years or when they make decisions about when a safety modification is necessary. Well, as I said before, GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. The code is only as good as the input assumptions that go into it. Minimize the human life or assume the cleanup is minimal and you'll justify very, very few safety modifications, which is what the NRC does pretty routinely. Interestingly though, as I said in New York State, a letter to the, uh, to the state of New York from the NRC says there's been 50 times when the MAX-2 computer code has determined that a safety modification would be beneficial. And yet the NRC has ignored it even when its code shows that a safety modification is necessary. The real problem then lies with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and how it implements safety modifications. Not only does the Nuclear Regulatory Commission see no accidents, hear no accidents, speak about no accidents, but I think there's a fourth monkey too, and that's that they believe no accident can occur. And if that's the case, I submit to you that an accident is likely to happen because our regulator isn't enforcing the regulations that are on the books. I'd like to thank the San Clemente City Council for having me tonight. If you have any further questions or would like to study this even more, uh, there are other videos on the Fairwinds website. Thank you.